Tonight, we're gonna make a Bargello quilt. The last time I did a Bargello, it was so popular, I thought, let's do another one. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to cut your strips into little tubes so we can cut them apart and make our beautiful rainbow quilt. Let's get to it. This Bargello beauty pattern is designed by Carl Hench, a local Missourian, so he must be amazing. And I'm gonna use these beautiful pre-cut strips to make the Bargello. First of all, can we just have a moment to discuss how lovely this is all packaged? This isn't a roll where we hide some of the colors. Oh no, we can see all the beauties. You're so pretty. And you're pretty and you have a great personality, and I love you too. So pretty. Um, but I must stay focused because we're gonna make this quilt, and I'm gonna start by laying out my strips in color order to make a strip set. That means I gotta break this up right now, this moment. Oh, I'm so sorry for what's been, oh, oh, that's pretty though. Okay, the first strip is always the hardest. It's like your printer ran out of the red. So these are the colors that are gonna make the first strip set of our Bargello quilt. All I have to do now is sew them together and press them all to one side. Now the first strip set is done, but this Bargello quilt uses a lot more colors than just blue and yellow. So I'm gonna lay out the next strip set. Okay. Right. And it's done. All I have to do is bring in the first strip set that I made and sew it together to make one giant strip set then you'll see where the Bargello magic happens. I'm gonna fold it together in half and make a tube, which feels kind of weird, especially if you've made any kind of blocks, but I'm gonna line up my two raw edges and I'm gonna sew a quarter inch along that seam, and then it's time to cut it up. Now first I'm gonna start by giving it a clean edge, kind of straighten that up, and then I'm gonna carefully cut it according to the pattern, which will show me exactly which width to cut. Look, it's like a party necklace. Like you were celebrating two years of something special, something magical. Oh, like the Midnight Quilt Show. That's right, it's been two years. Thank you for everybody that's watched, commented, and told their friends, and even people they didn't know about it. I couldn't have done it without you. So I'm gonna cut up this Bargello into all those beautiful strips, but first, I'm wondering, did you get a chance to watch my Gift Along series on Blueprint? If you did, let me know what you thought in the comments below, and tell everybody else what they missed if they didn't get to see it. Don't worry, there's a link to it in the description box below. For the second strip set, I'm still gonna cut it into strips that are just gonna be slightly different sizes. When cutting your strips, it can be really easy to kind of veer off course. So one thing to help keep you on track is to use the seams in your strip set to help keep it parallel. So when I position my ruler where I want it to go, I'm not only looking at my measurement line here, I'm also looking at this line along my seams and making sure that it's running parallel. Now that I have a bunch of different strips and a bunch of different sizes, I'm gonna try to keep them all in order and line them up to make the top half of my beautiful Bargello quilt. The pattern will tell you exactly which strip unit to put, which width, and which position. It makes my head hurt just a little bit to think about it, but the result is gonna be worth the effort. So what I've done is laid out my A strips and my B strips in the different widths. In fact, I've even started marking some of them to help keep me on track. The good thing is once you get going, it gets easier and easier. The one thing I wanna point out, the genius of this pattern is that he has you press them different ways. So if you look at my first column, it's all pressed up. And if you look at my second column, it's all pressed down. Oh, that makes all the pressing worth it. You know why? Because all those points are gonna match and it's gonna look beautiful, perfect. Okay, once I have them lined up, my job isn't done yet. I'm gonna have to unpick some of the rows. In the pattern, he tells you exactly what to do. So if I can follow directions, I should be able to make this happen. So starting with row one, he says to take apart between this section right here. So I'm gonna carefully pull these apart, which is so sad to think about, you know, a little bit of effort just taken away. And the sangria is gonna go at the top. I'm gonna need these for the bottom part of my quilt. So they're not waste, you are gonna be coming soon. So I'm gonna take it apart, again, referring to the instructions he's given me. Little pull and a flip. And here's a good rule of thumb to know if you're on the right track. All the fabrics should start moving in a direction, either up or down. 
and it's this fabric movement and the width difference that's gonna give it this really cool curved look when I'm done. So I'm gonna open up the rest of these and then we'll get a little glimpse as to what the top half of our quilt is gonna look like. So I have more rows to lay out for the top, but I had to show you how this is looking. Look at that color movement. There may have been a few cuss words dropped when I accidentally unpicked the wrong one, but after the fifth or 10th time, I really got it down. So before I go any further though, I'm gonna start sewing these together. This is not really the kind of quilt where I wanna pull them all and take them to the machine. I'm gonna sew them together in groups of two so I don't get mixed up. After some unpicking, then re-sewing and a little bit of unpicking on some parts, I've got all the rows for the top part of our quilt put together. I think Carl, who designed this pattern, must be a genius. Of course he is, he lives in the Kansas City area. There's a lot of quilting genius in the Kansas City area. Well, I'm gonna show you what the bottom looks like because it's just slightly different. So the bottom is basically just a mirror image of the top, except you have to take one block off of each row to get that mirror image. Well, I think this is looking so amazing. I'm gonna sew it together. And if I'm being honest with you, I've already been brainstorming ways to quilt it, and all I can think of are feathers. So I'm gonna get this basted into a quilt sandwich so I can start machine quilting some feathers. To be honest, deciding how to quilt it was a lot easier than picking one thread color for all these different fabrics. But it just so happens I put together a bonus video that gives you tips on how to pick out threads. And one easy tip I'll give you right now is that Blueprint takes the guesswork out of picking thread colors because every kit comes with a coordinating thread collection. So amazing. Okay, I've got my thread color selected and I'm gonna start by quilting a feather motif in the center of my quilt. I'm gonna begin quilting a line that curves out and back, kind of like a pointed oval, so that it's falling somewhere in this medium yellow color. Then I'm going to go back the other side to create my shape. And because I like to add echoing, I'm gonna add another echo line around the outside. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna begin quilting my feather by quilting a curvy line that goes to the other point. Then I'm gonna add my petals on that side by quilting a line that curves out, travels back, and then out and back to the spine. And I'm gonna keep quilting my petals in groups of two, going out and back, really ensuring that they fill in the space as much as possible. Once I get to the top of my spine, I'm gonna echo my way back down and do the same on the other side. Once I get to the top, I'm going to add one more echo line around the outside of my shape, and I'm gonna add feathers outside of that shape. So quilting a pointed oval, and then beginning to quilt my petals again in groups of two, going out, traveling back, and then adding my next petal to bring me back into the spine. And again, I'm using the fabric color as a guide really just quilting those petals so that they somewhat land mostly in that lighter green color. Once I get to the top, I'm gonna echo down the other side and repeat to make it look symmetrical by quilting petals on the other side of that space. Oh my goodness, I think I made the right decision with the design and the thread. I really think these feather motifs are gonna follow the curves of the colors and look amazing. Well, I'm gonna keep quilting these. I'll show you what it looks like when it's all feathered. The name of this quilt pattern might be Bargello Beauty, but I think I'm gonna call it Beautiful Feathers. The color placement of the fabrics in the quilt worked as a guide so that my feathers could follow them and just flow across the quilt. During the quilting, I was especially thankful for Carl's tip to press the stirrup units to the side because there were no bulky seams to deal with. Now this quilt is finished and it's time to cuddle up underneath it. Can't get enough of Bargello quilts? Well, be sure to check out an earlier episode where I made a different Bargello using the same tube technique. And don't forget about that video I have about picking out thread colors. It's definitely one to watch and the link is below. In fact, I'd love to hear what thread color you would have picked for this quilt. Well, thanks again for a great two years of the Midnight Quilt Show and here's to many, many more. Happy quilting.